Hello, good morning again, once again. We are back on our learning to know the truth. This time, there is something I want everybody to share with me and help me to ask the Queen of England and his government. Because uh, the British were the people who colonized a lot of African nations. And this I want to ask to prove my case that the original people of Israel are in West Africa, Ghana to be precise, and some in Burkina Faso, Nigeria, and Mali. The Malians and the Burkina Fasos were colonized by the French, and the Ghana, Nigeria were colonized by British. Kenya was colonized by British. Gambia was colonized by British. Zimbabwe was colonized by British. A lot of countries were colonized by British. But I want to ask Queen Elizabeth and the government of Britain that uh, they gave Ghana and Nigeria a currency that the note was called pound and the coin. And on the coin, they put a symbol which they call the shield of David or the star of David, of which the current formulated Israel of 1948 are using in their flag as their logo. This coin was given to Ghana and Nigeria. According to history, a hundred and over years before the establishment of the fake Israel we are seeing today. I want to ask them, why did they put that logo on the currency of Ghana and Nigeria? I wanted an explanation. Because the British colonized many nations but never put that logo on their currency. And what I want to put it to them is that they deliberately put that logo on our currencies to identify where the Israelites settled. If this is not true, Queen of England and the British government, I want you to prove me wrong and tell me why you did that. The currency is now here with me. You can see for yourself. It was called British West Africa, Peswa. You see, the Gambia was in West Africa. Why didn't you give Gambia? If, it would, if you deliberately wanted to give to only the West Africans, Gambia was also a West African country, but you never put that money on their, that logo on their currency, but Ghana and Nigeria. So that is to tell you that you want to identify where the Israelites settled. Next, in my dream, I saw two people on a land and the one has taken a bulldozer and trying to bulldoze in the house of the other man. And the one who teaches me in the dream was by my side and he said to me, look at these people. The two of them are not the real owners of this land. The owners of this land are in Nigeria. Then I asked, what land? Then he told me, Jerusalem. Then I said, why? Jerusalem belongs to people in Nigeria. Then he said, Jerusalem was originally called Jebu. Then the enemy changed the B to Jeru. Instead of B, he wrote R and it became Jeru. So I realized that the Jebu site that they have recorded in the Bible were the original inhabitants of Jerusalem. That is what he told me in the dream. And I checked the records because I was doubting him. And he said, go and check it. I checked the records and I saw that Jerusalem was originally called Jebu. When the man you people called David went and conquered them and took that place and added it to the nation of Israel. So that man 
after taking over that land he made that land the settlement of the king or the throne so he said Jabu Nsayemu that is where kings will be sworn in so the word is Jebu Nsayem. Then they turn it Jerusalem. Nsayem means where the kings will be sworn in. So he said Jebu Nsayem. That was the original name given by the man whose original name was called Ajeman. The man you people call David. He was given the title Ajeman simply because he was the one who fought and claim many lands and added it to the, the land of Israel. So that man was originally called Ajman. That is where we got the name Ajman. So this proves that we were the original. And then the first king of Israel that uh, the, the priest Samoa stored in the nation of Israel was originally called Siam. Yes. His original name was Siam, not Saul. They turned it to be Saul. You can check the records because everything that I was told in the dream, I have already checked it and found out that it is perfectly correct. That is why I am bold enough to present it before you. I know somebody must take me on, but once my voice has been heard by my people, I am okay with it. I don't care whatever happens. I want my people to know the truth. And that is exactly what I'm doing. The people in diaspora, especially, and the people in Africa who doesn't know who they are, I am now telling them exactly who they are. And later on, I will tell them who their God is and how to perform the rites and the rituals of their God. All this is coming on. So pay attention and listen to me and you get everything to correct and it will help you in your research and everything you are doing to know the truth. So the first man who came on the throne of Israel was called Siam. And because Siam never did well, with that energy called the spirit of Israel that we call God. In fact, the word G-O-D is even an insult and we shouldn't have used it. I am using it because of our brothers in diaspora because I never wanted to use it because it's an insult. But many people don't know that G-O-D was formed by the Englishman to insult the powers of our sisters. And I'm going to tell you because they said the Israel God normally punishes and kill those who go wrong. They say he is a gorilla of death. That is how we get the word G-O-D that you people are mentioning every day but you don't even understand. So when you check, I will prove it to you. When you check the books or the Bible of those who call themselves Israel today, that they say they are Jews. In fact, there's a big difference between a Jew and a Hebrew. A Jew can never claim to be an Israelite. But a Hebrew is an Israelite. Because in Genesis chapter 14 verse 13, he said, Abraham, the man you call Abraham, was a Hebrew, never a Jew. You see, so Nanai Abraham was a Hebrew man. He was never a Jew. So I'm going to explain how they got the name Jew. Anybody who believes in what they establish in replacement of the original worship, the original practice was Judaism. That is after our people have been taken to Babylon. They forced them to leave the original practice and they gave them this new practice that is called Judaism. So anybody who believes in that Judaism is called a Jew. And the fact that you believe in that religion does not make you a, a citizen of that, that nation. For instance, if I am a Christian 
That doesn't, that doesn't make me a Greek. Or if I'm a Muslim, that doesn't make me an Arabian. I only believe in the Arabian system, belief system. Or I only believe in a Greek belief system. That is Christianity. So those who are thinking that Christianity belongs to the Hebrew God, they are deceiving themselves. Christianity came from Greeks. That is where the roots come from. So it is not, it has nothing to do with the nation of Israel. But they just attach the story of the nation of Israel to it so that it will be acceptable everywhere they take it. The same way the Arabians also attach the Hebrew story to their own. Because the Hebrew story became the most popular history in the whole world. And everybody will wish to be part of it. But in reality, if you are not part of this nation, you are not part of it. And in most cases, we all see that the Hebrew God always speaks to the Hebrews. In every place, he said, Moses or Kwekumosi, tell the Israelites this. Tell my people. He don't say, tell the whole world. So when we are reading the history or the Bible, or anything, any book concerning that, we have to be attentive to listen to exactly what that God was saying and who that God was talking to. Now they have made it a nationwide because they want to deceive the world. But I tell you today, use your brains to assess things because it does not go for anybody at all. It has its own people. That is why it is written that those whose name can be found will be saved. It is not an individual name, but it's a tribal name. If you see your tribal name there, it means you are included. That is exactly, I'm not trying to be racist, but I only want to open up the truth that people can assess and know they are left from their rights. This is exactly what I'm doing. We are searching, we are researching, we are looking for, we are looking for who we are. And it's very important that everybody must know the truth. Because according to what we know, it is only the truth that will set us free. So why should it become evil if I know the truth and I am telling the people the truth? It may not please you, but all I'm saying is that I am for the truth. And the truth must go to its own people. That is what exactly I am doing. You see, so as I'm saying now, even it is written in the records that I'm going to show you that the kingship of Israel was separated from the rest of the nation. And according to the books of Samuel, you can see that the first king that was Siam, when he was to be found, he was, when they were looking for him, he was not to be found. And they went and consult. And it, they were told that he has hidden himself somewhere. So they have to go and fetch him and bring him and restore him as their king. And according to the story, as they are bringing him, this man was a head taller than any of the people. So it became our system and regulation of kinship. And according to the history, this system of regulation of kinship was given to only the nation of Israel. But it's only Ghana that practices this. You see? So why will you deny yourself that you are not the people? With all these traditions, with all these names that have been hidden from you, we have come out to know that the names that our ancestors bear is exactly the names that we bear here. So we are the original people of Israel. And if I am to tell you the truth, there was no king in Israel called Solomon. Traditionally, tribally, we can't even assess any of the tribes under this sun that have an ancestral name that is called Solomon. I'm going to tell you the true, the true name. 
this man was called Kwe, and it will surprise you. I know you will shake your head, but I'm telling you the truth that you don't know. The man was originally called Kwe, that has been hidden from you. Why was he called Kwe? He was called Kwe because he was supposed to be a gunman's son. But, uh, but, uh, uh, but fortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately, he became what today we call the Asante man's son. That is Ajiman. And the story is saying that Ajiman saw the mother of this boy, or the, the, this woman, who is a gun lady called Maka, while she was bathing. He took delight in her and called her to her, his chambers and then did what he's supposed to do with her. Later on, find out that it was one of his army's wife. So after he has done that wrong, all he could do is to have the man being killed so that he can have the wife as a, a wife. Because the wife becomes a widow and anybody can marry a widow. That is the law. So after doing all these things, when a man of God went to him and then prosecuted him before God, he accepted his fault. So that man decided that, okay, if I have done that wrong, I have to make sure that that man's name continue to remain. So the child that this woman, the wife of that man will bear for me, will bear the name of the original husband. And the man was a gunman, so he has to name the boy after the man, Kwe. And that is how that man got the name Kwe. He's originally called Kwe, not Solomon. I'm telling you the truth. It may, it may, it may, you will be surprised that Ghanaians are the original Israelites. So when the Ghans are talking about being the original Israelites, don't doubt them, because it is true. Don't doubt them at all, because that is the truth. So all the story in the Bible concerns you, these families that I've already mentioned. But you don't know. But today, I'm revealing it to you. Somebody will say, especially a Christian will say, and so what? Yes, it matters. It matters because assuming that you are a child in a, 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 a glass house, and the people who live there are not your parents. And they tell you, you are a slave that their forefathers bought and brought into this house. You will continue to be useless and continue to accept to be slave. Until one day, you go cleaning your master's bedroom. And fortunately, you got, you got hold of a document. You read it and saw every document that it is your father who built that house, and that house belongs to you. What will you feel? At that moment that you have found that secret, what will you feel? Your spirit will begin to arise, to claim your position. And that is exactly what I am doing for the people, original people, spirit to arise and reclaim their position. So don't take it as nothing. It has something to do spiritually. It is completely spiritual healing. So take it serious and know that what I'm saying is to heal your wounds that you have suffered for so long. So all this message that I'm giving is true and correct. As time goes on, we will keep on revealing a lot of the stories that have been hidden to you as we continue giving you the information about who you are, especially, and about what language was called the Hebrew language. Even the scriptures that was written, every scripture that has been written has a Hebrew title. In Genesis, the Hebrew title, they wrote it Bereshit. But I was told in the dream that it was very ashes in the beginning of time. That is true. Then when you come to the Exodus, the Exodus became Gan. 
That is with Shimo. We are living the hope. Then when, when you come to Leviticus, Leviticus is Weyukra. What is the meaning of Weyukra? Weyukra means when we talk of Le Levites, they were the people who originally uh, helped the priest to perform their duties. And when they performed their duties in those days, it was palm wine in a pot and they used the calabash to serve the palm wine as the priest uses the palm wine to pray, to pour libation. And after that, the Levite who is a servant to the priest will show the last wine and say, for a crana senior. So they will say, Were you cra? Cra means calabash. The one who shows the calabash. So that is the title of Leviticus in Hebrew, original Hebrew. Then when you come to numbers, numbers will say Bemini Womba. But they have written it short and say Bemimba. <laughs> but the original word is baby new Wemba. When we were coming, coming from where? When we were walking down slowly from Egypt and we were going back to that land which they call Cana. So they say, when we were coming, all these stories were written. What actually happened on our way? So baby new Wemba. That was the original title, the Hebrew title of numbers so in order in other series we will bring out all for people to know and also in chronicle he says debre uh, animem chronicle is debre the hebrew name of chronicles debre ahimem debre ahimem means positions and governance Position is positions in the governance. You see, we have the kings, and we have uh, Sanahine, we have uh, Benkumohine, we have Nifahine, we have them. So it's like we have them as ministers to, of today. So we establish those things before the paid man came to learn how to form governance. In actual fact, the Greeks are their gurus. But the fact is that the Greeks learned from the black man in Egypt. They learned from the Ewes who were the pharaohs. That is Pharaoh Amethepe the first, Pharaoh Amethepe the second, Pharaoh Amethepe the third. So after this dynasty came another dynasty. And we are the same people. We are the same people. <laughs>